So today I'm doing things a little different. Actually this whole week I'm doing things a little differently. Last week I made two garments that turned out really cute. I was actually very, very happy with how those turned out. It took me a lot longer to edit that video than I was expecting. I kind of got it out a little bit late. It ended up being one of my more favorite projects and actually one of my favorite videos that I've posted here on the channel. They weren't like very difficult garments, but making two garments and filming two garments and getting it posted in a week is, you know, it's kind of a lot of work. So this week I kind of want to slow things down a little bit. I've got a few projects on the brain. I'll probably just spend some time prepping projects. Last week I did wash a little bit of fabric for some projects that I have coming up. So the projects that I have on the brain right now are the trench coat project, then a long line kind of blazer style coat, and also a pair of jeans and a pair of twill pants with a flare leg. These are all the things that, that I would like to start on immediately. But for the wool coat, I've already ordered samples. I went online to Mood Fabrics and ordered some samples for fabrics that I'm thinking about for that. I also went on blackbirdfabrics.com and ordered some samples because they had some wools on there that I thought looked really nice. Those are taking a little bit longer to come in. In a few moments, I'll show you the samples that I got from Mood Fabrics because they shipped really fast. Actually, I kind of am now in this conundrum where I like a lot of them. I may end up picking a fabric that I like from Mood before the Blackbird fabric samples get here. So anyway, I ordered samples for that. So I just want to make myself another pair of jeans out of the fabric that I bought from Core Fabrics. I've got it washed and ready to go. And then I also have some dark green twill that I picked up from Mood Fabrics. Again, I ordered that a while back and it's already washed and ready to go. Most of my fabric is washed and ready to go. Usually when I get fabric, I pretty quickly go ahead and just throw it in the washing machine and get it prepped and ready because I know when I get to the point that I'm ready to start sewing. I'm not gonna wanna wait on the fabric to be washed and dried. And my sewing room is a total mess right now. I have so much crap. I mean, it's amazing how quickly you can accumulate stuff. This week's just gonna be about kind of getting things prepped and ready for some upcoming projects. Also, the weather is like really kind of like gloomy, a little bit rainy, cool, beautiful fall colors. It just, it feels so cozy to be inside. I've got the fire going. My dog is just like sleeping peacefully here by the fire. It's so relaxing. I pulled out my winter sweaters. I'm just feeling super cozy right now. And anyway, I need to get some stuff done. So I'm going to go tidy up my studio and I'm going to start pulling patterns and kind of strategizing for the next few days. I don't know how much I'll get done this week for those projects, but I do kind of want to get my game plan for those projects and take you guys along with me for the process. So let's get to it. show you some of the samples that I got from Mood Fabrics and these are samples that I got for different types of wool so that I could kind of decide what I wanted to make this wool coat out of. I think it's always a good idea to order samples for the more expensive projects that you plan to be doing. For a coat you're usually going to have to purchase about three or more yards of fabric. So the fabric samples on Mood range in price from about $1.50 to about $3 depending on the type of fabric. So it's a pretty low investment up front if you are unsure about the type of fabric that you want, if it's a fabric you've never worked with. When it comes to things like a wool coat, I always order samples first and that way I make sure that I know what I'm getting before I drop a bunch of bucks on some expensive fabric. I ended up getting about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different samples. Anyhow, I will share with you now what I got. I saw a couple of coats recently that were in this kind of like dark hunter army green color that I really liked. So I did pick up this sample. This is the Alberini Italian Forest Wool Cashmere Coating. I, it doesn't have the prices on these, but I think this was one of the more expensive ones, but it's just a really nice deep green. Mood Fabrics has a review system that lets customers share photos of their projects. 
A couple of the photos that I saw, it looked a little bit more like a Kelly green. And I was like, let me just order it because this the sample photo that Mood provided was definitely closer to this. And, and it's reading actually even more green on the camera than it does in real life. The samples that I saw, photos of people's finished garments looked a lot more kind of brighter green, which I didn't necessarily want. So I really like this one. Uh, I'm gonna put that in the maybe pile. So in the kind of camel beigey category, this was kind of the color that I was originally thinking for like a camel colored coat. And I really like this. However, I do have a vintage coat that I thrifted a couple of winters ago that is beautiful. And I have worn it a little bit. It does need to go to the cleaners. <laughs> I actually have not cleaned it since I got it from the thrift store. I don't know what that says about me, but it needs, it needs to go to the cleaners and I need to replace the lining in that, but it's a really great coat. And actually this is so similar to that. I feel like maybe I shouldn't make another coat that's almost identical to one that I have already. And this is also the same Alberini Italian wool cashmere coating and the color on this one is brown. So yeah, I'm gonna put that one in the no pile because I don't think I need to make another coat that looks like the one I already have. Then I also found this color. So this is a different brand of fabric. It is the Carafe and Beige Heathered Brushed Wool Twill Double. So this one actually is a little bit thicker. I'm not sure of the exact terminology, but it's basically like a double cloth. So it's kind of got the same finish on both sides, I believe. Yeah. And this one is actually a really nice heathered brown color. Um, I think this would be really, actually really pretty as a coat. I do kind of like that, but I don't like it as much as the green. So I think I'm gonna put that in the no pile. The next one, yep, yeah, this is the same as this brown one, but it's a gray and it is gray. I'm sorry, I'm like having to read it like this. It is so dark in here right now. I don't know if you can tell. Hopefully this camera is picking up enough light. I also don't have my glasses on. This is the gray and beige heathered brushed wool twill double. And again, this is nice and thick. It's got a lot of length on it, but it's just a really nice, gray color. I actually really like this. And a while back, a coat that I saw that I loved, um, it's a pattern by, oh my gosh, I can't think of the, it's a London based independent pattern company. If I think about it, I'll put it on the screen here so you can know which one I'm talking about. But they have a coat pattern. I think it's called the Rumana coat. And one of the samples that they sewed on the website is in a, is in a gray wool that looks a lot like this and it is beautiful. And, um, I was actually thinking about that pattern today because I was like, oh, maybe I could use that pattern. Uh, so I don't know. So I'm gonna put this in the maybe pile. I also came across two samples of fabrics that have these sort of like multicolor sort of, you know, tweedy kind of feel to them. And this one is the famous NYC designer. <laughs> Italian walnut and cannoli cream is the name of this one. And I really like this. I thought it was just really cool. It kind of has a vintage feel to it. And I don't, think that this is what I want to use for my coat, but I do really like this and I'm, I'm glad I, I looked at it because maybe I'll think of another project at some point that this would be perfect for. I think this would be a really cool blazer. It would be a really cool skirt. That would be really cool. So yeah, I really like this one, but I don't think it's quite right for the project that I'm doing. Now this fabric, this is the beige woolen wool tweed coating. So my Jessica blazer that I made was made out of this exact fabric, and but it was gray. It was kind of like had gray and little black flecks in it. This one's uh, more of a beige and brown version of that. And I can say that this fabric is actually fantastic. It was really easy for me to work with. And I love that blazer. I wear it all the time. Again, really glad I got picked this one up just so that I can kind of see a variation on that. And also I will note that this fabric, I mean, it feels a little bit thin than I was anticipating, but since I have made a garment out of this, I know that it is actually quite substantial and really nice for a nice blazer. So yeah, the woolen wool tweed collection that they have, I really like, okay. Also ordered some black. So I got this black wool. Now this is actually, okay, this is called rag and bone dark green chevron wool coat. So this is actually green. Wow, that is like really dark, almost black. So it has like a really, really like hard to see. I mean, if you really look at it, you can see that there's a chevron style to the weave, but it is kind of hard to see. And that's actually really nice, but this is quite, quite thin. I feel like this would be better for maybe a pair of wool pants just because the drape of it, I think is probably a little too lightweight for the coat that I want to make. But yeah, that is, I forgot that I got that. But yeah, I don't think it's the right fit for the project I'm doing. I also got this kind of fun 
houndstooth print wool. I don't think I'll use it, but I just really liked it. And I was like, I kind of just want to see it in person. Maybe it'll change my mind. Maybe I'll, you know, decide to make something out of it. This is quite nice. It's a little bit fuzzier than some of the other wool samples. And this one is the Balenciaga Italian Gray Houndstooth Brushed. So since it is brushed, it does have that softer, fluffier feel to it. And this one is, you know, a little thicker feeling. So I think this would be a really nice coat. And actually my mom has a really cool little houndstooth peacoat style coat that I love. And she wears it during the winter with everything. It just goes with everything. That was another reason I wanted to pick this up. I could see this being a really great neutral in your closet. But again, I don't think it's a yes for me. I think it's, I think it's not really... Oops, there goes my earring. It's just not hitting me the same way that some of the other ones are, but I'm glad I got it. I know what it looks like and maybe it'll spark inspiration for another project later down the road. Put my earring back in. And then last I got this black wool. So this is also the Alberini Italian black wool cashmere coating. So I got three samples of that Alberini Italian wool cashmere coating. I thought this could be nice for a black blazer back in my fall wardrobe planning video I was talking about how I wanted to add a black blazer now for the oh okay that's my mom calling so I will have to cut this short let's see this thing is just giving me a lot of trouble let's see how that works okay test test I wanted to go over some of the patterns that I plan to use for the different projects that I have coming up for both the trench coat and the wool coat originally I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to draft those from scratch and I kind of don't feel like drafting them from scratch. I kind of want to keep it a little more simple with those just because whenever I'm developing a new pattern from scratch, it just takes me forever. And I make a lot of muslins and I'm kind of getting down to the wire, especially with the trench coat. I feel like I have a sort of limited window of time to make that and actually wear it before it gets really cold. And also I just don't feel like drafting it. I want to keep it really simple for myself and use the resources that I already have so that I can focus on the detailing because especially when making outerwear and coats and jackets, there are a lot of special techniques and detailing that go into those types of garments. And I really love that part of it. And I really wanna focus on those parts of those two garments more then I have the desire to draft a pattern completely from scratch for those. So I decided to take the pressure off myself, the, the totally self-inflicted pressure that I was putting on myself. Also, I was starting to lose enthusiasm for the trench coat and it finally occurred to me that I actually don't love the style of a traditional trench coat. What I was really looking for out of a trench coat project was a lighter weight jacket that would carry me through some of the transitional seasons like late spring and late fall. When I was doing the styling for last week's video for those two mesh shirts, I tried them on with this corduroy blazer that I thrifted last winter. And I really was reminded of how much I love that jacket. And I really love the style of that jacket. I love the shape of the lapels and I like how it's semi-fitted. And I started finding images on Pinterest that were similar to that style up top, but just a little bit longer. So they were still kind of the trench length but they weren't kind of in that traditional loose fit trench style. I think also when I first started pinning images for that trench coat, I was pretty heavily influenced by some of the trench coats that have been trending in a lot of the fashion marketing lately, the sort of oversized silhouettes. And while those are very beautiful, they're just not my style. I know I'm not gonna wear something like that. So I have decided to copy the blazer that I have and make myself a pattern and just make it longer and turn it into a fitted, a little bit vintage inspired long line trench coat that's not a traditional trench coat but has a nice wide lapel because I love a nice wide lapel and I think that that's one of the things I love about that blazer. So that's the plan for that. And I'm gonna use the fabric that I had originally planned to use for the kind of traditional trench coat style and I'll just make that a lined lightweight jacket. And similarly for the long wool coat that I wanted to make, you know, I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to draft that from scratch as well. But then I thought, you know, I have all of these vintage patterns that I thrifted, you know, a couple of years back, I found the mother load of vintage patterns at the thrift store for like 50 cents a piece. I bought a bunch of them and I have been trying to kind of work through some of those patterns. I think that's just really cool to use some of these vintage patterns and they're a lot of fun. I found some really fun styles. And so I found this pattern. This is McCall's 6813. I don't even know if you can still find this. You might be able to find it on like Etsy or eBay, but this is basically just a jacket, a skirt, and a shirt, you know, a three-piece separate set. I really like the jacket, and so I think I'm going to start with that. So I may kind of adjust the collar 
a little bit, depending on how it looks when I'm muslin it. This also has a patch pocket right here on this one. I probably will do a welt pocket on that just because I think welt pockets just look so nice and so much more tailored and finished. But yeah, I think this pattern is gonna be great for what I want and pretty close to what I want. Now, one thing to note about this pattern, it is quite old, especially the older patterns that they have are not very size inclusive. I have what would be considered more of a straight size body. I'm at the very, very top of their size range. And actually my hip circumference is outside of the top size on this pattern. So this pattern goes up to a size 18 and the hip circumference for that size is, is 42 inches. Mine is about 43 inches, I think right now. It's pretty close. It'll be easy for me to grade that, but that'll be something that I can kind of talk a little bit more about when I make this coat. You know, talk a little bit about using a vintage pattern and grading a pattern and even sizing up a pattern if you need to do that because they are not really very size inclusive at all, but they're still cool. I mean, they're still cool designs. And I mean, I, I can't resist when I go to the thrift store and I see really cool patterns, I gotta snatch them up. And then for the two pairs of pants that I wanna make, the jeans and then the twill pants, I'm just gonna use the jeans pattern that I drafted, you know, several months ago when I copied my Levi's jeans, that Levi's dupe pattern that I did. That pattern has been well used so far and I know it's gonna be one that I continue to go back to. I love how that pattern turned out. So I'm gonna use that for the jeans. I'm also gonna use it for the twill pants. And for the jeans, I'm just gonna use the pattern as it is and just lengthen it. For the twill pants, I'm actually going to modify the pattern so that it has darts in the back instead of a yoke. So I think what I would like to do today is actually pull out the jeans pattern and go ahead and make that adjustment to the back yoke for the twill pants that I plan to make and just draft a new back leg. And actually I'll draft a new front leg because it won't have the pocket cut out of it. So I may go ahead and do that today. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna do that right now. I started by tracing the front leg of the jeans pattern first, and I also made sure to attach the pocket facing back to the pants pattern just to eliminate the cutout for the pocket. Then I added a little bit of extra width to the bottom of the leg to make these a little bit more flared, and I did the same thing for the back leg. Then I cut out the front leg and set that aside. Before I cut out the back leg, I wanted to go ahead and add that yoke back onto the back leg. So at the top of the back leg, I just marked a line that was 5 8 inch down from the top, and that that would be representative of the seam allowance. Then I found the same seam line on the yoke, lined it up with the seam line that I marked at the top of the pants leg, and first traced one side where it aligns with the center back and marked the center of that yoke where the dart would be. Then I pivoted this so that it aligned with the side seam and did the same thing, marking that location where the dart would be. Doing this will leave a gap where the top of the dart meets the waistline, and now I can go in and draw in the dart and that completes the back leg of the pants pattern. Once I get both legs cut out, I just want to walk the pattern to make sure that the inseam and the side seams match up. So I've got the back leg laid here on my table. I'm just aligning the inseam with the front leg and here it matches pretty much perfectly. Then I will do the same thing for the side seam. And here you can see that the front leg kind of comes in a little bit more at the knee. So I'm just marking that on the back leg and I will trim that off so that it matches up nicely when I go to sew the pattern together. I also want to make sure that I mark my grain lines and all of the other pattern information on both pieces. After I finished drafting the pants, I was still feeling kind of energetic. So I decided to tackle this blazer. I laid the blazer on my table and just took a few moments to really study the jacket and try to understand all of the different pattern pieces that make up this little coat. Once I felt pretty comfortable, I decided to get started. I'm basically just laying the jacket flat on my pattern paper and trying to get each piece perfectly flat so that I can trace the outline. I'm going to use one of the push pins from my Lutterlow kit to help me map out each of these pieces. I want to make sure that I weight this down so that it doesn't move and I'm first tracing around the edges that I can get to with a pin. Then I'm going to take this little push pin and start marking locations through the jacket onto my pattern paper. So I'm basically just making little puncture marks in the paper below and I'm trying to put each of these puncture marks at, you know, locations where things line up like pockets, where it meets certain parts of the sleeve and so on. And I found that it actually helps to punch several holes in each spot so that I kind of have a little cluster of holes that makes it easier to see the holes. So here you can see kind of faintly, 
each of those little puncture marks and the areas where I put several, it's just easier to see those. Then I just went around and connected the dots to trace each of the pattern pieces. I also made sure to mark other important information like the roll line on the lapel, and then I went through and added a 5 8 inch seam allowance to each of the pieces. I continued this process for all of the pieces of the jacket, and I found that it was helpful to actually trace them all out on a large sheet before cutting anything out, just because it helped kind of keep the paper from shifting underneath the garment. And I really enjoyed the process of tracing this blazer. It was very, I don't know, it was very therapeutic to trace it all out and then to see all of these pretty little pattern pieces when I was finished. Okay, I'm very pleased with how this week went. I mostly feel like I need to share finished projects and show you something from beginning to end and like package it all really nicely and neatly into a 20 to 30 minute video. This week, I really wanted to experiment with slowing things down, taking my time. And I think that that really helped also with my enthusiasm and energy and stamina for these projects. I've mentioned in previous videos, the importance of taking breaks and slowing things down. I think that is especially important for myself. I you know, have mentioned before that I used to have a a small handmade business where I was making products to sell. I was sewing products and, you know, I got so burned out doing that. I was always trying to find a way to speed up the process of making multiple items. I was doing a lot of repetitive sewing and I did that for several years and kind of learned over the years that that is just not something that really feeds my soul. And that is why I ended up switching gears. And, you know, it's also kind of how I discovered garment sewing. I wanted to find projects that were just for me, where I could slow down and enjoy the process of actually creating something as opposed to trying to quickly pump out products to sell. And I have found that garment sewing is very rewarding for me for that, for that reason, because I am able to slow down and really focus on the technique and the details. I feel like I did also kind of cover a more realistic way of working through projects for myself. I do like to kind of switch things up. If I'm working on something for too long, I start to kind of lose enthusiasm for it. And, you know, my stamina starts to wane a little bit. So I think doing it this way definitely keeps me excited about the projects. And it is safe to say that I have a renewed enthusiasm for this trench coat project. All in all, it probably took me like an hour to an hour and a half to copy all the pieces for that. It went really quickly. It was actually kind of fun to do it that way. It was a nice way to kind of switch up the drafting process. I think my first step next week is gonna be to make a muslin of that and just make sure that it fits as I'm expecting it to. So we'll see, I'll kind of go through that whole process next week, most likely. I think I could probably do a muslin in a day. If after that, I feel like I wanna kind of step away from it for a bit and work on something else, maybe I'll go ahead and work on the two pairs of pants that I have. As far as the wool coat, I, Still haven't decided if I'm gonna go with the dark kind of army green color or if I'm gonna go with that gray. I'm gonna sleep on it a little bit, but I'll probably will order fabric very soon for that project. And of course, I will share the entire process here with you guys on constructing all of these projects. So we'll just kind of see how it goes. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy this video and you would like to see more from me, please be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. Okay, I think that is all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye.